broadcast live here on Pink Dogs and Sports Chat Place YouTube channel throughout social media. We'll get you out here well before the top of the hour. Give you guys enough time to get those bets in for the primetime games. And that's what we do here on the drive through Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. It's over live free sports picks for the games beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and later. And to deliver those winners at professional handicappers over at Pick Dogs and Sports Chat Play. So let's take a peek at who's on the show with us here for today. All right, with us we've got, with us is Alex Smart, Mills Young, Wayne Scott. We're looking for Jay. Someone told me we went to the baseball game, so we'll see. He usually logs in, so we'll see where we can get him on the lineup in the show here. Uh, we got Smart, Brown. Well, Brown's a late scratch. We're going to actually, Wayne will go first here. Wayne, then Smart, then Young, and then I will close this one out. All right. Opening day here in baseball. A couple games up there on the board. 8-2 here. We see Blue Jays up on the Rays. Uh, the Angels get smacked around 11-3. No surprise there. Sandoval, another over. Another over there. Hope you guys are paying attention to some of these pitching trends here. <laughs> and, uh, he just got let up. Angels got let up there in Baltimore. And, of course, uh, Dodgers having a nice to start here at seven one at last check, and uh, let's go. We're gonna start with um, actually we're gonna start with Wayne here. Uh, Wayne's got some connectivity issues up there. I guess he must have moved. He must be in West Virginia, but we'll bring him in right now. He'll catch Wayne over at Pick Dogs Premium. Let's see if we get him in right now. Uh, ready to go here in just a second. Uh, let's see, he's ready to roll here. All right, um, see, I, I hit James's key just thinking thinking of that connection. Here we go. What's going on, Wayne? What's happening? <laughs> What's going on, Tony T? What's going on, Pink Dog family? Hope y'all doing good out there today. Everything's going great. Great today. So uh, we're going to take a look here with uh, Wayne's Pickets are going to be here. We're going to move it here because this was going to be Alex's game. So let's go ahead and move this chains here. You're going to be looking at the UNC game today uh, as they're facing here at Alabama. At last check, it was four and a half in this one. Yes, sir, man. And I like this UNT team, man. I, I, I like a team with uh, upperclassmen like this UNT team has. Um, these upperclassmen, man, they, when they get to this part of the tournament, man, it's, it's it's lose or go home. It's lose or go home for everybody. But some of these guys don't have nothing to play, much to play for after this. So um, I, I, I like that, that they're going to come in this game with a chip on their shoulder. We've seen them um, – Play to me the tougher teams as of recently. Not only that, that Michigan State game, the fact that they got down 12 to 15, they didn't waver. They bounced back and they blew the hell out of Michigan State. This Alabama team is good, but they're very one sided, just offensive oriented. Um, this North Carolina team is super balanced, and I just believe that the size gets to them. I'm a big fan of Grant Nelson. But um, he's a smaller big, and um, I think that uh, Bangkok's going to take advantage of him. I just love the length of North Carolina. I love the fact that they're a good rebounding team, and I love the fact that they can actually uh, clamp down on the defensive side while scoring just a, as efficient as Alabama. With all that being said, I'm going to lay the points with North Carolina. I do think this is one of their years that they uh, – end up in this final four and get busy this year. I think that, like I like I pointed out, the senior leadership is what's going to push this team over the edge along with the length and um, them playing well. Another uh, um, small stat that I want to throw out there is Alabama is a high turnover team, and that's another thing that's going to come and bite them in the butt getting later and later in tournaments uh in tournament time. So I'm um, going to take UNC and lay the four and a half with UNC here. All right, we got uh, uh, Wayne here going to take uh, North Carolina here in this spot here uh, at uh, lay, laying the four and a half against an Alabama team that, again, um, having issues uh, with defense here. We, we know North Carolina uh, is a team a lot more balanced. They can defend. Uh, they, they're very good on the interior, as you said, that inside, that length. These Alabama always seems to get those, those length players, right, that, that are always going to be tall, have the reach advantage over opponents. Yes, sir. And uh, they have outside of their point guard with their point guard does a lot of scoring. But two through five, Tony, this team is long. Even their small forward, he looks like a power forward out there. He's not the very shiftiest, but he's a very long, very good defender. He hits the three well. And um, just the small things, Tony, it starts to add up here. North Carolina being having a huge advantage on the board and um, Alabama just being a, a, a more sloppier team, turning the ball over. Those extra possessions are key in um, this part of the tournament. And while Alabama is a great scoring team, UNC is not a bad scoring team. They'll light you up on offense as well, and they have the way stronger defense. Um, I just got to lay the points with UNC here, man. My, my most comfortable spot on the college basketball card today, and I'm giving it out to you guys. 
be here for free on uh, the drive through. All right, we got uh, Wayne here on North Carolina here laying, laying the four and a half. Of course, we always like to go over the rundown here with uh, Wayne here. Uh, on the other sports in progress, we are going to have coverage here on that Buck game, but uh, there's another NBA board game on the board, Boston, Atlanta. It's a big spread here. What did you think about that one? About 16 on the uh, favorite here with uh, the Celtics. Man, I don't love this game at all, but um, we got Boston, the, the hottest team in the NBA. Some feel the best team in the NBA. In a revenge spot after getting embarrassed, taking an embarrassing loss, uh, getting come back on like that. Man, I think we have a what the five fingers say to the face game here. And Boston comes out and smacks the hell out of the Hawks in this one. I can't really look the Hawks way. Just coming off a of back-to-back, dealing with the injuries they're dealing with. I can only look Boston's way. They're just a far better team, a uh, far balanced team, and uh, just just way stronger uh, offensively and defensively. I think um, – and uh, their depth off the bench is also going to play a part in them actually covering this spread. I think that they um, they get their revenge in this one in a uh, blowout fashion. I'm going to ride with Boston Celtics in that one. All right, uh, Wayne there of Boston Celtics there on our little bonus set coverage there. We're, we're going to have coverage here on the Bucks and Pelicans in an upcoming segment. Wayne here on North Carolina, laying the four and a half here against uh, Alabama tonight. College hoops, Sweet 16 action. All right, Wayne, let's take a look over at Pick Doctrine for tonight's action. Of course, on the board tonight, we have the Sweet 16. A couple on the board here uh, from the uh, NBA. Also, a big card on the ice. And, of course, uh, baseball with some primetime activity. Most of it in the daytime, but we still have those primetime games. What do you have going on over at Pick Doc's Premium? Uh, I just had a three pack today. Three MLBs went two and one in that three pack. Really focus on tomorrow. Huge NBA card tomorrow. Good in a, uh, NHL. Good uh, better college basketball card for me, in my opinion. And um, good MLB card slate tomorrow too. So um, really focus on tomorrow. Take my two and one day. Take my profits and uh, get ready for tomorrow. So you guys can. Get something long term. I'll have my plays up by the night. I always try to have my plays up early as possible so you guys can get the best line in the line that I'm on before it moves. And uh, to get that is by getting a long term plan. So you can catch me on the long term plan or pair me up with one of these top handicappers that you see every day on Pick Dog. And let's get you some cash in your pocket. And some cash in your pocket indeed here with Wayne Scott over at Pick Dogs Premium. Uh, no better time to get those long term passes. Those will always serve you well. The three, seven, or third day all sports pass. Get all of up Wayne's premium plays for that time period. Select when you go to his handicapper page, make that purchase. And remember, there is a promo code you can use here to save some cash. Here, when you use the promo code uh, PICK at checkout, that will save you there uh, 15% and multi cappers as well. All right, Wayne, it's always great having you on the show. Have a great evening. We'll catch up with you tomorrow, but also we can catch your content here with your boxing video series. Yes, sir. I couldn't get it, the video out to you today, but I will definitely be on tomorrow, um, Friday, with Tony T and get you guys my boxing picks for this weekend's card. We have a good card with uh, Roly Romero taking on Isaiah Cruz. A lot of people know Cruz from his tank fight, and we have a good undercard fight um, with uh, Fundora versus uh, Tim Zoo. So those are two good fights. Lines aren't too bad on that, so I'll uh, come by and drop you guys out some good winners on uh, on tomorrow's show with Tony T. There you go, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit those notifications so when Wayne drops these videos, you get them right away. Obviously, get the best numbers. All right, Wayne, is always uh, great having your show. Enjoy the night. We'll catch up with you again tomorrow. All right, appreciate you for having me, Tony T. Good luck on the uh, rest of your best for the night, Pig Dog family. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. It was Wayne Scott here on the drive through All right, guys, we'll continue here on the drive through uh, We're going to get here to Alex Martin in just a second, but I just want to remind you of the newer feature here on the uh, drive through is that we ask you, the, the uh, viewer here, for your, for your opinion, for your chat pick. So our chat pick of the day is going to be a good one here. Illinois and Iowa State not covered on the show today. Uh, if you like Illinois, plus one half, it's A. Iowa State uh, plus the one and a half is B. Over 148 is C. Under 148 is D. Your chat pick of the day. The chat has been on a tear here over the past three weeks here. You guys are doing great work here. So again, go ahead and put in your picks. Make your vote. Be heard here in this game tonight. Illinois, Iowa State. A real close one there. If you like Illinois, plus one and a half. A, put B in the chat if you like Iowa State, plus one and a half. Over 148 C. Under 148 is D. Your chat pick of the day for tonight's action. All right, let's continue here on the drive through. 
Up next, we will bring in Alex Smart. You'll catch him over at Pick Dodge Print, where he is just putting up some phenomenal numbers here on the board. We'll get him in right now. More coverage here from the Sweet 16. Uh, we'll bring him in here in just a second. Uh, we'll bring in Alex Smart. Alex, what's happening? Hey, Tony. How you doing? We're going to attack some college basketball action from tonight's uh, NCAA tournament. And, you know, it's hard to bet against Connecticut. It's hard to even look another way when you when you, when you you look at this Connecticut team. I mean, they're top to bottom, just an amazing team. But that's not what I'm, I'm going after here. What's also amazing and, you know, what wins championships or the myth of what wins championships is great defense. Uh, offenses get here, obviously, but they actually have an offense. But their defense is amazing. They've won nine straight games, you know, this Connecticut team. The Huskies are just – I mean, how do, how do I say it? Just suppressing teams' movements, controlling everything under the boards. Uh, like I said, they won nine straight games. Eight of those nine opponents were held to an average of 6.1 points per game under their season average. Uh, since late February, UConn has given up an average of 88.8 .8 points per 100 possessions. Number four adjusted defense in the country. I don't know, man. San Diego State, they're going to have a hard time scoring tonight. You know, I really like the under here. You know, I, <laughs> I'm i even willing to lay possibly as it's too late now, but I more I look at this Connecticut, Connecticut team, hey, let's even throw in, lay that lumber, baby, and let's go with Connecticut to uh, also cover. But uh, the key bet here is to suppress San Diego State under the total. All team right. Total. We got Alex has already convinced himself to go ahead and lay it with UConn. Why not? They have, they've yeah. covered the last two NCAA tournaments. They've just been pounding teams. And the San Diego State uh, team total under 62 and a half. San Diego State really issues there shooting the threes, getting off and scoring points, right? Uh, this is a team that lost at Grand Canyon. If you remember back in early on, it's just they can go on a shooting slump. And, you know, sometimes you go on a shooting slump, uh, uh, Alex, because the defense makes you go on a shooting slump. Yeah, absolutely. This, uh, this team is just. I mean, I, I'm just lost for words sometimes. I, I, I watch them. Since that, since that loss at Creighton, which I think was just a down performance, I mean, every team has to have a down performance and uh, sort of uh, gives them a platform of where they're going to go from. And you can see where they're at now. They're, they're at their peak, and uh, they're going to be hard to beat. You know, uh, anything's possible, but, you know, edges are edges, and uh, that's what we're going with tonight. Yeah, edges indeed here. Uh, team total under 62 and a half. And of course, Alex convinced himself a bonus pick for you guys. Go ahead and just, just lay it with UConn <laughs> there. Uh, you want to get any, any interest there with first half or just, just the whole game? You, you see any edge in the first uh, I, half? I, I prefer, yeah, well, you know what? I, I'll go whole game because, okay. like I said, at this time of year, anything's possible. You know, we could have, you know, a real low scoring first half. Any Like anything's possible. Here. Yeah. And uh, we all know. We've seen it before, right? So the, I like there's, the whole game. A whole game, okay, okay. There, you know, there's an interesting stat here that I was looking up in this game. You know, there was a lot of talk about how San Jose played the last game right on Sunday and then had to come back here and play the Thursday early. But then I, I looked at something here, and you know, some of these teams play three games in seven days, right? That's sometimes the schedule works out that way during the regular season. Well, this is one of those spots where San Jose State is playing their third game in seven days, and they are 0 6 to the spread in this spot. Yeah, no, great, great numbers. And, uh, you know, it's a telltale story. And 0-6 against nothing compared to what they're going to face tonight. There you go. So, Single state yeah. team total under 262.5. And Alex also said, hey, go ahead. Just lay it with UConn. <laughs> that's, that's, there you go. <laughs> don't, go don't go crazy. But don't you, go nuts. You can lay it with UConn. It's yeah. agreeable lay there with UConn. We just saw the money line go up again here on UConn at minus 759. It opened at minus 4. I knew some sharp betters that were jumping on the opening money line. I would think it was like 425 when it opened. They were pounding that money line. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard that too. And I just said, yeah, maybe just a little, little steep for me still because, you know, the just the time of year it is. But, you know, hey, still value is value and edges are edges. And there are betters out there that just constantly uh, hit hit the edges and uh, are very successful. So there yeah, you go. But, uh, no money line play now. It moved from 425 to 759. So there's that. That We're not insinuating play the money line. We're just saying that when it opened, there were some sharp betters that were right. playing the money line uh, that opened there. So just want to make I, I clarify my statement there. So there was no confusion as to recommending a money line. It's not recommended this time because of how much the line moved, uh, almost three 
325. So yeah, that's, a, that's too much of a steep move. So What's this noting too? Move. That some of the best, best bets are made right when these games, uh, what, right when these lines are put up. And usually they're put up minutes after the games are over or minutes after we find out the, the, the uh, matchup, right? The way, that, the way this yeah, tournament is structured. They're, and they're looking for the money, yeah. They're looking to see who's going to bet, which way it's going to go. And they, they adjust pretty quickly. And uh, a lot of these lines, uh, you know, even some of the sharpest betters are not uh, able to get them sometimes, you know. So, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, if you're if you're if you're in there by invite, you know, uh, grab it. That's right, indeed. Uh, again, uh, Alex here said, "Say team total under sixty two and a half," and also said on Yukon Lane the spread. All right, tonight uh, seven thirty nine Eastern time. All right, Alex, let's take a look over. I picked out for a nice action, of course, on the board tonight. We got a few in the NBA. Big hockey board tonight. Uh, Fourteen games on the board from the NHL. Sweet 16. We still have some primetime baseball on the board. I think there's three games in the primetime hour, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Alex enjoying a great 2024 here. 3,533 units of profit, all documented over at the Pick Dog Spring. You can verify those numbers. Just like going to, to his handicapper page and hitting the, the pick history, you'll see every play that we do have four games in primetime, I should say, for Major League Baseball. What do you have going on over the site? Well, tonight we've got a key NCAA tourney total, and uh, it involves Clemson in Arizona, and I've just ripped apart the books over the last couple of years with my uh, total 61% conversion rate over 200 plus selection run, $42,000 in dime player profits. So uh, come on board tonight. We'll make some money and uh, also have some NBA action on board uh, from both games, uh, aside from the Bucks and Pelicans and the total from the Celtics and uh, Hawks. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of action. More action tomorrow. I've got a uh, a really key game on uh, Duke Houston, and uh, that's going to be a big game. But I also feel strongly about uh, which side takes home the cash tomorrow. So uh, join me. We'll have a lot of uh, elite eight selections or you know, some viable money making selections from the elite eight, and uh, of course the Sweet Sixteen. That's right, guys. Get aboard with Alex Mott over at Pick Dog Swim. Great results here. Thirty five hundred thirty three units of profit for twenty twenty four. All document. I know a better time now to get on board with Alex Smart. Use promo code PICKET, check out, save that 15% off. All right, Alex, it's always uh, great having you show. Continue that great success. We'll catch up with you again uh, next week. But, you know, we've seen you pop in on some of these weekend shows, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking about this weekend, too, as well. I've just been really busy. March Madness is really throwing me some curves, and I've been pretty busy. So uh, we'll see if I show up this weekend. But I'll be back. I'll be back on the weekends. Yeah, so just keep an eye, guys, on the weekend show because Alex will pop in get a lot of knowledge. There's a fun show <laughs> in there. Yeah, <laughs> mix, yeah, with, yeah, show. mix in with, show. With, that, yeah. with that weekend zoo. <laughs> <It's after laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, man, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of zoo action for That's sure. That's right, no doubt. Anyway, <laughs> right, nice, seeing you. nice seeing you, Tony, again. You See too you as soon, well. Man. See you soon. You got Alex Smart here on the drive team. We'll continue here on the show. Guys, if you miss any of our picks, we recap at the end of the show. Stay tuned for that. Let's go back to the chat pick of the day here. We're asking the chat to pick this one because it's not on our show schedule today. So it's Illinois and Iowa State. If you like Illinois, plus one and a half type A. If you like Iowa State, plus one and a half type B. Over 140 to C, under 140 to D. Go ahead and get those picks into the chat. The chat has been on a tear here. You guys have done a great job uh, giving out picks uh, in this with the chat pick of the day, your contributions as well as your performance. Of course, that we appreciate your contributions. And man, the performance has been nice. I think only about three losses over three weeks. I mean, <laughs> that is impressive from you guys. And I've always respected the chat room here. Uh, you guys are really sophisticated. We, I know we did a baseball segment yesterday and no one complained about it, which tells me that I like the I like I like the attitude in this chat. If there's money to be made, you want it. You don't care what if it's baseball, Sweet Sixteen, you you want it. You want winners, and uh, of course uh, we co we cover this full time. So a lot of our a lot of folks know we do baseball. We kind of, you know they think about it, the most bets we make are in baseball, right? There's 162 games per team, <laughs> so you better believe we're going to be knee deep in this stuff. Boy, am I seeing it. what what is happening here? Wow. Iowa State, man, it's getting all the votes coming in right now. One, two, three, four, five. Got five Iowa States. I got six Iowa States now. Wow, six to three. Iowa State has just been coming in strong here. Hey, we just got another one here from uh, Illinois, but six four right now. Iowa State up, and Matt D is coming in with his pick. So we got another one here from Illinois. So really good votes coming in, guys. Keep those picks coming in. We got Blake here on the 
under the total there. Looking for the defense to come through in this game tonight. So, all right, really good contributions here. Let's continue here on the drive-through. We're going to go ahead and bring in our man on Mills. You can catch him over at at, uh, at the Pick Dogs YouTube channel. Heavy, heavily into the, into the content creation here at Pick Dogs. So we'll bring him in right now. I'll see if we can find him here in just a second. Let's see here. Mills, Mills, Mills. Ready to roll here with Mills. Let's see if we got bring him in here in just a second. NBA coverage tonight from Mills. Mills, what's happening? What's going on, Tony? How's everybody doing today? Everything's going great. All right, here we go. NBA coverage tonight here from Mills on the board, and we're going to be looking at this one. Pretty interesting game. Look at that line where it's sitting here. It, it will be Bucks and Pelicans here. The Bucks road favorites point half. We see the total come in here at two twenty four and a half. Yeah, man. Uh, not a lot of NBA games to talk about today, you know, because you got MLB kicking off, uh, you know. So they gave us two games, you know. One of them is actually a good game if you guys looked at it. I mean, the Pelicans are 7-3 in their last 10 games played. Uh, if they would have had a full lineup in here, you know, you would have pretty much a good matchup out there uh, with Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson versus Dame Lillard and Giannis. Uh, but you don't have that. You got Brandon Ingram that's been out, so Zion Williamson been holding it down for the Pelicans. The Bucks, though, I mean, you guys remember what they did last game out. They were up 20 points against the Lakers, man, and I think they lost uh, in, like, double overtime. <laughs> That's not going to sit well with them. Coming into this game, I looked at it to where, you know, Milwaukee Bucks, when they're at a low price tag like this in spots that people think they're going to lose, they usually win. But when they're supposed to win by four points and cover and, you know, they're playing against a team to where, you know, it's questionable, they usually lose. I'm taking the Milwaukee Bucks in this spot. Hear me out in this. The Milwaukee Bucks, five out of five of the last ten games played. But the two teams that they've been losing to as of late are, are decent teams out there. Losing to the Lakers, losing to the Boston Celtics. Uh, and then they got wins over good quality teams out there too, like OKC and Phoenix Suns, I want to say. Uh, I think the Milwaukee Bucks are going to have revenge in their mind uh, just from what happened out last time against the Lakers. They played against the New Orleans Pelicans already once this year. Man, they put up like 141 points on them boys out there to 117 out there. Giannis went for 30 points, 12 rebounds. I think he does the same. I like exactly both those stats in the prop shop today for him. Uh, I think he's going to go out there and try to play bully ball. You guys know the story with Dame Lillard. He's still trying to get acclimated to the offense. I think this is a spot, though, where the Milwaukee Bucks come into the New Orleans uh, home and, uh, you know, get a big win out there and uh, kind of shut up the naysayers out there. So I'm taking the Milwaukee Bucks on the money line. All right. Uh, we got Mills here. Says go ahead and take the Milwaukee Bucks here on the, the money line here. Uh, it's going to be about minus 126. Our line's moved a little bit here. So uh, uh, Mills here squarely on the money line in this spot. Yeah, it was a disappointment there for, for the Bucks. The way. It was a kind of a shock to see the Lakers without LeBron James pull that on them and uh, like, <laughs> it's always poor Doc Rivers right things like this just seem to happen to him <laughs> man it is man and just think about it like the Bucks when uh before he came in they were what second sitting second in the east I don't know where they're sitting at now could be the same spot but if it is it just don't seem like the same team um you know and it's like Doc Rivers is gonna get a lot of that blame right there you know and it's like Last time we seen Doc Rivers, you know, he was looking bad on the sidelines of the Philadelphia Sixers. To be real, Tony, I haven't seen Doc Rivers look good on the sideline in a long time, man. I mean, last time he was smiling, I think it was in the Clipper days. Uh, you know, be besides that, though, it seems like it's been headache, headache, fix this, fix this, try to get my son on the team, try to get my son to stay in the league. You know, one of those type of things out here for Doc Rivers. But uh, And when it's all said and done, the guy only got one championship. And he done had some teams. He done had some teams by now, man. I mean, he started off, I think, coaching like the Orlando Magic or something. I ain't gonna give you yeah. the history on him, but yeah. So I'm not a, I'm not a big Doc Doc Rivers fan. You know, I think sometimes people just uh, clinch on to coaches that stay around the league because a lot of times coaches don't stay around the league. You know, so they're like, all right, give him another shot. Give him another shot. You know, so uh, yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of up and coming coaches out there. That's on the rise. I actually think um, that girl coach for the uh, Las a uh, Vegas Aces, uh, Becky Hammond or whatever her name is, is probably a better coach than like 20% uh, of these guys in the league now. All right. Uh, they're uh, looking here at the, at the Milwaukee Bucks side here. Uh, we'll be, we'll be um, 
uh, mills here in this spot. I was just trying to look here, uh, trying to put a look at this, get maybe that UFC card. We got it. We got it. I know. I know a content producer out there, but I was going to try and look if I can pull some of these game, these fights up here. Yeah. So and have a discussion. Week, we have. We have. We have a lot of time. We have a lot of time right now because uh, some of our buddies are out uh, <laughs> out enjoying opening day and probably not in the best. Probably best not in the best shape right now to come on the air if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha, <laughs> you. Right. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. All let right. me know if you. Uh... If you All want right. to go over us, uh, yeah, the we'll go, we'll go over there. some of these fights here. I'm going to go ahead and get it get it rolling here. I just want to make sure I have my graphics set up and I have it queued. So let me just go into my graphic setting here and get into my line feed, and we'll pull in the UFC fights here uh, for uh, for uh, this uh, this weekend's card. It looks like ESPN. And we'll we'll start here. We'll start work our way from the main event onward. That's probably the easiest way. Last fight of the day, five fifteen, showing here on my board here. So let's work our way this way, uh, and we'll look here at. Uh, uh, in this spot here, Jan Daroba and Godinez, we see 220 here, total two and a half on ESPN2. Yeah, man. So this one, you got a jiu-jitsu fighter and uh, Jan Daroba going to be taking on Lupi Godinez. She's a good boxer. Uh, she mixes in a lot of takedowns. She has a high pace of cardio. Uh, her being a favorite in this spot, she should win. The difference is this, though. Sometimes she doesn't do what she's supposed to do in the cage, in the ring. Her fight IQ ain't always there. Jan Daroba, um, she's... She, She's one of those girls to where if she gets your back, you're probably not going to be able to get up. She can submit you in here. I like the fight going the distance. That's my best bet. I see, I think uh, Lupi Godinez, though, she should be able to get it done in this spot. It's just that uh, she, she lets you down sometimes as a favorite. You know, she surprises you, uh, like at a minus 135, maybe in an underdog spot, you know. But um, she's the overall younger fighter and better fighter. She should be able to win. But Janda Rope is live. She can be able to get her down to the ground. All right, there we go. From the next one, we'll look here at uh, the main event. Fai Sabatini and Landwer. Uh, and this one looks like that one got canceled here, so we'll get to the next one here on the board. Oh, hang on one second. Don't let me down. Line feed. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we should have went that way, right? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Petrosky and Melcone here, 207. Melcone total sits here at uh, 2.5 on ESPN2. Yeah, so on here, um, let me see, that guy, yeah, Malcolm. so yeah, he's pretty much around a two-to-one favorite on there, that's where he stayed at, uh, it's, it's kind of two fighters who resemble the same, but both wrestlers like to grapple, like to get their opponent down to the ground, Malcolm pushes a pace, gets about seven takedowns per fight in here, uh, when it comes down to it, Petrosky, his last time out, he got finished against uh, Michael Pierre. he took that fight on short notice, uh, and he got knocked out in that first round, took some time off, uh, he's a powerful striker. If it stays on the feet, uh, he might be live. But he's a fighter that tends to slow down as the fight goes. Malcoon should be able to win by decision in here. Um, but I think the price tag is off. I think it should be like a minus 150, minus 140. Not a 2-1 to one favorite on there. Uh, best bet is fight to go with the distance in there. The over 2.5, wow. that's It's only that, minus 185. That's crazy. These are two fighters that don't finish their opponents. Um, yeah, I, I really love the over uh, in that spot. Over in that spot. All right, let's get to the main event here, as I should have had earlier. All right, here we go. I'll go and Nelson here, 241. I'll go and uh, Nelson here, plus 201, two and a half total. Yeah, man. So Kyle Nelson, man, he's been surprising as an underdog. Uh, he was able to get his win in his last fight out against uh, Fernando Padilla. Uh, Bill Algio, uh, he's been a guy that's been as advertised, covering his price tag. Uh, minus two to one, minus two thirty. That's where he was at earlier on in the week. He should win in here. I think he's a solid parlay piece. He's a fighter that's going to give you a lot of volume, a lot of activity. Kyle Nelson's one guy that's going to kind of just come forward, and that's pretty much about it. Tough, rugged fighter, you know, but that's about it. Bill Algio, he should have way more paths to victory in here, uh, and maybe even finish him in the late round three. But yeah, I do think uh, Bill Algio is the spot in that one. All right, uh, next uh, as we continue here on this uh, rundown UFC. Uh, Blanchard and uh, Fjord. Here we see uh, Blanchfield here on uh, dollar eighty five total four and a half. Yeah, man, that's the main event right here, man. Uh, two girls. Whoever wins this is going to be fighting for that title uh, between Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko in here. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield. She goes by cold hearted, cold blooded, and that's exactly what she is, folks. I've been betting on her and backing her now ever since she's been in the UFC. She's been covering that price tag, finishing Jessica Andrade, uh, beating Talia Santos. She already beat people that already uh, pretty much uh, challenged for that title shot already. Manon Ferrolo, 
she's good. She's legit. She's a clean striker. Uh, she's going to be the w more powerful striker. Aaron Blanchfield is the girl that's going to be able to strike with you, mix it up, take you down to the ground. She's the girl that's looking to submit you, though. Um, and that's what you want out there. And she's not scared to throw. I like Aaron Blanchfield in this spot. I can't go against her. She's been making money for me um, ever since she's came into the UFC in here. Uh, and I actually think she could probably get the finish in like a late fourth round or so. There you go from Mills here. Uh, and then we got Jakani and McKee here. Jakani here, dollar thirty-eight total, one and a half. Yeah, hard fighters to trust on both sides. Uh, Reese McKee coming back to the UFC, made a stint in the UFC earlier on, went to some uh, overseas promotions on Cage Warriors. Uh, Chad uh, Chitty and Jokui, um, fighter that you just can't trust. Doesn't have a lot of cardio, but he's deadly with the strikes. Uh, you know, he's a kickboxing specialist. I do think Chitty should be able to get the win in there. Uh, he does have a lot better ways to strike than Reese McKee. Reese McKee, he's going to be there, though. That's the thing. Uh, as the fight goes, he's going to be a guy that, you know, if the going gets tough, he ain't going to quit on you in there. The over one and a half at minus 115, I think that's a good way to bet in here. I, I would take that and say, you know, this fight should last seven and a half minutes or so. So, yeah, I like the over one and a half. Over one and a half there. And uh, we've got... Uh... Wayne Men and Silva in this one. Silva, 246, total one and a half on ESPN. Well, Tony, I know you know Weidman, so let me explain. Chris Weidman is the guy who beat Anderson Silva the first time. You remember that? Yeah, that's some time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's still fighting, folks. And um, he's a big underdog in this spot. Now hear me out. Just hear me out. After that, he fought Anderson Silva again. And Anderson Silva broke his leg uh, kicking him and had a freak accident. Chris Weidman is 2-0 and over people with the last name Silva. Mm. Mm. But there's no way in chance he wins this fight, man. <laughs> I think Bruno Silva's going to win this fight in here. This is Chris Weidman's retirement fight. He's fighting in Atlantic City. Uh, I guarantee he's going to retire after this fight. Um, he didn't look good in his last fight out there. He was dealing with some stuff in his knee to where they thought he was going to need a new, another ACL uh, surgery and stuff. Come to find out, he didn't need it. I think he's washed goods in here. But if he does win, it will be by sub. His jiu-jitsu is top tier. And sometimes it seems like when veterans get like a easier opponent in their last fight with the UFC, seems like it turns to wrestling sometimes. And, you know, people just get... Hit, hit with something and drops and the other guy wins and walks off to the sunset. So you never know. I wouldn't bet this one with a lot of uh, uh, commitment and faith, uh, but I think Bruno Silva gets it done. Yeah, I've right been there. Is Arlovsky still active? <laughs> Man, he actually is. He just ah. fought like um, like two months ago. Luke and Buckley here, dollar seven both sides sold two and a half. Yeah, it's a good one right here. So Joaquin Buckley actually opened up an underdog in this spot. He was a plus 115 in the underdog way. People's been betting him and backing him ever since Sunday. Now he's down to pretty much a pick him out there. Uh, minus 105 on a lot of books. He's a guy that's coming down to this weight class. Since he stepped down to the welterweight, he's been uh, you know able to get some good wins. Vicente Luque, though, he's a guy that has the fight IQ. Fight resume of, a, of of some of the best fighters in the division. He didn't fought the best people uh, in this spot. I do say this uh, to get either of these fighters at this price tag. It's kind of like you just gotta pick which way you're going and lay your flag. They both got past the victory in here, but Joaquin Buckley though, he's a fighter that's going out there with that powerful uh, striking impact, trying to put you out. Luke's just trying to win the fight, and Luke sometimes is just leaving his chin there, able to get hit. I think the footwork of Buckley's gonna mess with Vicente Luke. Buckley could actually mix in the takedowns too. His cardio's good. He's a specimen. If you look at him, you just think he's like a linebacker or something. So he definitely uh uh. Uh, carries that same impact when he's in the cage. I got to go with Joaquin Buckley in this fight. But, um, yeah, Vicente Luque, uh, I, like I said, uh, he's one of those fighters to where he's real good and it's a low price tag on there. And he's a fighter that seems to uh, upset people and turn around the tides when everybody's going against him. Uh, so I, it's, 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 a, it's a, that, that's why it's a pick em price now on there. But as you guys can see, as the money came in on Joaquin Buckley, they think he's the rightful side. I think he's the rightful side, too, as well. And that was the co-main event one. 
There you go. We got the uh, co-main event and the main in there. Lots of picks here from Mills, of course. So we'll tell you how you get more of those UFC picks. All right, Mills. Uh, here for the show, it will be on the Bucks money line here, about plus 120 now is with the line move there against the Pelicans. All right, uh, Mills, everybody know, let everybody know what you got going over at the Pick Dogs YouTube channel. Lots of content there with your prop shop. Of course, they can get the rest of this UFC rundown. Yeah, man, you guys want to see the whole UFC rundown, man. It's live on the site right now. Uh, it's a UFC bet with me. You guys know I went over all 14 fights on ways to get you guys paid, give you guys my best prediction, gave you guys a two-leg bulletproof parlay in there. Uh, as well, uh, something that I bet, something I believe in, I should hit as well. Uh, then besides that, I got the Mills Prop Shop dropping daily with you guys. I mean, what more do you want? We go over everything. I covered baseball for you guys today. I went over hockey for you guys today. And I covered uh, NCAA. So, hey, man, I got two college uh, props that I like. Take Caleb Love over his point prop and then take R.J. Davis over his point prop. I like R.J. Davis a little bit more than Caleb Love. R.J. Davis playing against some Alabama boys. You know it's going to be a high-scoring game, so you can check out the prop shop uh, there. And then I'm doing the UFC tier videos for you guys, too, so go ahead and check that out. I just went over the top three lightweights. Uh, it's a UFC tier video, and it's on the Pick Dog show, uh, channel out there. Check the shorts for that one. Um, so, yeah, man, everything you guys want out there, we're trying to go over and cover it for you guys. That's right, guys. So make sure to like, subscribe, set those notifications so when uh, Mills drops those videos, you get them there in real time. All right, Mills, as always, great to have a show. Enjoy the rest of the week. We'll catch up with you again next week. Man, just watching my Yankee game. Hold mm. on to the lead. Hold mm. on to the lead. You got to believe. All right, man. Catch you guys next week. Catch you next week. Mills here on the drive through. Let's continue here on the show. Guys, if you ever miss a pick, we'll recap in the show. Stay tuned for that. Let's get back to our chat pick of the day here, guys. Uh, if you like, uh, let's chat pick of the day. Oh, hang on a second. What did I do here? Chat pick should take me to the chat pick. All right, maybe this one didn't work. Let me go here. Here we go. Chat pick of the day. Illinois and Iowa State. If you like Illinois, plus one and a half hit A. Iowa State is B, plus one and a half there. Over 148 is C. Under 148 is D. Right now we have Iowa State with an eight to six lead right now over uh, Ill Ill over Illinois. I think we have two. Uh, uh, we have one here on the under, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we do have one on the under. So we get another one coming in for Iowa State. So Iowa State in a pretty good league. We'll recap this result here keep those picks come in we'll recap them here at the end of the show all right let's continue on here on the show we'll get to my pick and we got the nba covered on this two game card we'll take a look also too at some of the games in major league baseball here in prime time maybe some sweet 16 action as well my pick will come from this uh red sox and mariners game i'm going to take the red sox here at plus the 135 we know brian bale is going to start he had a rough start out when he broke in baseball had a rough outing uh, faced the Blue Jays lineup, I think, in, t in two or three of his first early starts of his pounded. But since then, the last two years, he's been really able to turn his career around, uh, showing improvement there on, on the mound, really reducing his walks. High ground ball pitcher, 56%. Now, we know Luis Castillo will be on the mound here for uh, uh, the Seattle Mariners. Good strikeout, right? Done really well. But when you look at the uh, uh, the uh, Red Sox, they've been a pretty good underdog. 10-5 and five is an underdog, a plus 150 or greater, a plus 11 unit return. You look at Castillo, the team record behind Castillo, just 23 and 30, minus 22 units when he's favored by minus 125 to minus 175. We'll look here at the Boston Red Sox here with the plus price here, plus 135 here against the uh, Seattle Mariners. All right, we got some, we got four games in the primetime hour, so we'll kind of take a look at these here. Uh, we're getting some finals coming in. Matter of fact, let's get, uh, Let's reverse, let's, let's reverse this graphic here, and let's see what else we can get to. By the way, I do have a best bet on the board at Pick Dog Stream. Also, a three-pack up there as well. So get on board with me over at Pick Dog Stream right now. Three-pack, mixing NBA and college troops, and a best bet from college troops right now up on the board for me. Use the promo code PICK at checkout, save 15% off. Or you can also get my long-term pass, my three, seven, or 30 L sports pass. Get all my premium plays for that time period. Just like when you go to my handicapper page and make that purchase, remember the promo code PICK, save that 15% off. All right, let me get to the MLB board. Uh, let's do a little bit of a recap here, and we'll get into some of the games in prime time just to catch up on everything going on. Of course, this Angel and uh, Red Sox game has gone final, and uh, the Angels were absolutely pounded here. Orioles got all over Sandoval early. 11-3 final. Orioles cover, cover the run line, and the game goes over the total. Tigers hold on for that one nothing win against the White Sox. Tigers open up huge favorites, like minus 170, near minus 180, finish at 148. Total going well under the total here. Tigers get the win on opening day. 
Nationals and Reds, well, Nationals, not the day for the Nationals as a dog. They were a really good dog, but the Reds get it there, done 8-2 to two as a big favorite. Total going just over, and Reds cover the run line. Pirates are still tied, middle of night, 5-5 with the Marlins. The game going over the total. Uh, the Marlins closed as short favorites here, but we go to the bottom of the ninth in a 5-5 tie. Blue Jays just completed the win, 8-2 at uh, Toronto. Uh, they win as a dog at plus 130. Game flies over 7.5. Yankees holding on here right now. Bottom ninth, Yankees five, Astros four. Yankees with the dogs at plus 133. This one's pushing the total right now at nine runs. Dodgers have just defeated the St. Louis. I was worried there about uh, Michaelis with his high contact. Big uh, Freeman with a big big game here with some home runs uh, getting to Michaelis. 7-1, Dodgers beat the Cardinals, cover the run line. Game stays under the closing number of nine runs. Twins get the job done. 4-1 over the Royals. They were against the Royals. They were just a minus 121 favorite. Looked a little short there on paper. Royals do have improvements there to their starting pitching. You always have to worry about the Royals bullpen. Uh, but again, Twins 4-1, the victors. Giants and Padres. This one goes to the Padres. 6-4 in a high-scoring game going over 7.5. Uh, the Pods get the win here to go to 2-1 on the season. Cubs and Rangers, well, this one will be starting here in about half an hour. We see uh, the Rangers here at minus 116. Justin Steele, let me make sure Steele's still on the mound here. I might want to make sure there's no pitch detection. Yep, Steele and Eovaldi on the mound here. I'll have a pick in this game for you guys. The Cubs, in an interleague play, the Cubs 18-5 of the over in interleague play. The Rangers 26-12 and of the over at home against left-handed starters. We'll go over 8.5 now. Let me see if there's any 8s out there. So do your line chop and get the best numbers because I have handicapped this one at 8, but this, obviously, people know about these things. Over 8.5 would be the play here, Cubs and the Rangers. All right, let's continue here on our MLB rundown for today. Uh, next game here up on the board will be Guardians and Athletics. This one may be an obvious pick for you guys. We don't shame. Was it Bieber still? Is Bieber in there still? It will be Bieber and Alex Wood. Uh, there, I'm no fan of wood in the hood here, so I'm going to be looking at this one here. Uh, Cleveland or nobody? Look at the Guardians come down to minus 136. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's I think it's pretty obvious who you got to take in this one. Um, you know, Wood had 29 appearances last year. Although this ballpark might play to better to, to Wood, right? One of those fly ball type of pitchers, a low strikeout pitcher. You know, his strikeouts were only 17% last year, 10% on the walks. Not much of a ground ball pitcher, uh, but boy, this line really 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 has come down here uh it was in the 60s almost 70s uh earlier on the overnight but Bieber on the hill we know they're not going to go very deep so you're going to see a lot of the cleveland bullpen in here remember first year manager in here for the for the for the guardians but this line is just too short against this uh against this athletics team i can only look here at the cleveland in this spot uh in, in in that one all right let's continue here on our mlb rundown for today we'll get to the next game here on the board and we and we're going to go rockies and the diamondbacks here and I uh, just want to verify the pitching has not changed in this one. It will be Freeland and Gallon uh, going head-to-head -head in this one. And the one I'll be looking at in this game here is I'm going to be looking at the uh, under 8.5 runs here. Uh, Freeland had a really good spring. I think Freeland's kind of get back to form. He had a really bad year last year. But Freeland has been 24-8 and eight to the under as a road underdog, a plus 175 to plus 250. Arizona 37-20 and 20 to the under uh, here uh, at home. I'm sorry, overall here. Uh, uh, it, it, in their past uh, 57 games, but their bullpen, remember the bullpen for Arizona really performed well last year. I should say Arizona 37 and 20 to the under at home uh, last year. Their bullpen performed very well late last season into the playoffs, so I would definitely look for a hold here and a safe possibility here for Arizona. If it does, obviously we'll get to the bullpens today, so we'll be looking at the under in this game. You know, Gallant put up some really good numbers. Very low whip last year, 1.12 strikeout rate, 26%. If I remember correctly, really good at home as well. Limits the home runs, and we're looking for Freeman to get back to the, into that fine form that we're used to seeing. So we'll look here at in this one at the uh, under the total here of eight and a half runs. All right, uh, uh, continuing here, we got through the baseball in prime time for you guys. You got my pick. We still have just a few more minutes, so let's go ahead and transition here. Maybe we'll transition here to. Uh, We'll go back and we'll look at the chat pick of the day, guys. Give you another opportunity as I switch sports on my on my uh, graphic here. You guys, give us who you think is going to win uh, cover tonight in the uh, Illinois and Illinois and Iowa State game. Uh, if you like Illinois, well, we'll simply put in uh, A for minus Illinois my, uh, there, or we like Iowa State. Click B. That's really the simple, really simple there, guys. So pick the chat pick of the day. All right, let's get to college hoops here. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch my graphic right now to college basketball. Boom, here we go. We already got some picks from the guys, but I don't want to ball hog and take their games. But let me go back here a little bit here and uh, see what we have for you here in the Sweet 16 round. Uh, all right, we'll start here. L.A. Clemson and Arizona. Clemson uh, will be the underdog here, getting five and a half in this spot. And uh, here I could only look here at the, at, at the underdog here. I'm going to be looking at the underdog Clemson here in this spot. Boy, Clemson, they've really shot and defended very well in this tournament. I do respect their eight-point win against a Baylor team that has struggles from the perimeter. Arizona, remember, Arizona's had poor shooting performances in three of their past five games, 40% or lower. Uh, there we've seen the flaws for Arizona. I just think here uh, I'm going to respect the Tigers' defense to keep them in this game, keep them competitive. Remember, this seven point that's two pos over. It's more than two possessions. I can only look here at uh, the dog here in this one, Clemson here at plus the seven. All right, uh, uh, we'll continue here on our college basketball rundown here, Sweet 16 style. I'm with everybody here. I don't say everybody, but you know, we're we'll talking with Alex here. To me, it's you, Connor, nobody. If you like team total here, uh, we talked about that earlier with Alex's. I would have to agree with that as well. Alabama and North Carolina uh, going head to head. I would have to look at the North Carolina side just based as we talked about earlier. I think we talked we talked with um, Wayne about this. I agree with him with the rebounding, the interior uh, the interior defense, the perimeter defense, and offense here for this uh, North Carolina team. I like him in this spot. Illinois Iowa State. I got to look at the minus one and a half with Iowa State. Just like the defensive style from this team. I do like uh, their victories there against Houston. That's the one that really stands out to me, the performance there against Houston. Like that one quite a bit. All right, we got through there. We got through our rundown here from Major League Baseball as well as the Sweet 16 tonight. Hope everybody uh, has a winning a winning week and a week winning that Sweet 16. All right, let's go back and review here. Let's get some more picks here. If you like Illinois plus or Iowa State minus, you see you see what you hit you hit here. A for Illinois, B for Iowa State, that would be minus one and a half for Iowa State. That's a typo there. So just so you know, it's, you're going to have to win by two there. All right now, it's 10 on the Iowa State side, six on the Illinois side. We still have some time, and once we get these votes in, we will go ahead and we will, re, we will claim a winner right after we do, the, um, we do the recap. So let's get to the recap right now. Alex liked the San Diego State team total under 62 and a half. Mills was on the Bucks money line plus 100. Wayne, North Carolina, minus four and a half. I'm on the Red Sox here, plus 135. The one I like the most, that team total San Diego State here under 62 and a half. Have to agree there with Alex on that one. All right, let's close out this uh, pick chat pick of the day here, guys, as we're asking you who to pick. And we're going to close it off here. The chat pick of the day will be on Iowa State here at minus one and a half. That is the chat pick of the day. We did get three to the under, though. So the under dominated in, in the total there. So three to the under. So that is the chat pick of the day. Is Iowa State laying the point and a half. That's going to do it here for this edition here of the drive through. Now, now is the time for you guys to put in your best bet or your show pick. Put that in the chat and we'll read it off. I'm sorry I didn't read it yesterday. I signed off too soon. <laughs> so I will make sure that we read your chat pick of the day and your best bet. So put that in the, in the comments right now and we'll read them off. That's going to do it for this edition here of the drive through guys. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow live at 6 p.m. Eastern time. We'll do it all over again. We'll bring our cappers from Pick Dogs and Sports Chat Place. We've got our place for you in real time. Remember, it always gets started with that morning show at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time during the week. It's Mitch, it's Jay, it's Chris. Also, Mitch's seven picks in five minutes. His betting tools shows, roundtable discussions with the professionals. Chris has his around the league from the NHL. Jay, as well as his jam session from NBA. Of course, don't forget the video series here, Rides of Wacky, NHL A to Z. That 14-game card, go out there and check out those videos. He produced 14 videos on NHL plus the, the parlay. So 15 videos for the night's NHL card from Rod Zawacki. If you're looking for NHL, get it from Rod there. Also, a video series here from boxing video series from Wayne. He produces those. Mills with his prop shop and his UFC rundown. You want to get those uh, picks from Mills as well. Ron Romali, college basketball bank shot breakdown, as well as Brian Bittler as he goes contrarian with you with the, with the contrarian sharp plays. All access, Big Al McMorty, Costi sharp training plays. Of course, Dana Lane, of course, with his against the public betting. So many, many, many video series here, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, set those notifications, be live with us when we give out these plays and you get the best numbers. All right, let's go to your best bets. Put your best bets and your show picks in the chat right now. We'll read them up. Blake likes Rangers money line, and he also likes the Diamondbacks game under eight and a half. That's from Blake uh, in there in the chat with his show pick. Show pick here from Doubles has been really good to us here. He likes Ottawa puck line, lay the puck and a half here that comes from Doubles. 
uh, in the chat uh, with his best bet, show pick of the day, show pick of the day, or you call it best bet, whatever you like to call it. J-Man, Mariners, money line. He's going in there hard with the Mariners tonight, going against me in that one. It's all right. Uh, Cubs uh, from Andre Harrison. Cubs versus Texas. He likes over the total of eight and a half. That's from Andre Harrison with the show pick, best bet of the day. Chris White Thunder has been very good to us here in the chat with his best bets. He likes Cleveland and Oakland under seven and a half in that big ballpark. I think that ballpark might help Alex Wood with his pitching style, believe it or not. Uh, let's see. Get more of your picks here. Belton's, the Pelicans W for Deshaun Williams with his pick, show pick coming in here. All right, guys. This is be your last call to get your show picks in here. We got Luis, Red Sox, plus one and a half, Bucks minus one. That is from Luis in the chat boy that's a lot of juice there that's a lot of minus there on the red sox plus one and a half there so uh rich 87 likes the pelicans that's coming in from rich 87 so the last call for your uh for your show pick or your show yep you're, we're going to call it your show pick your best bet ron crawford arizona laying the laying the uh, run and a half here no i'm sorry arizona wildcats that's not wildcats that's i gotta be arizona uh diamondbacks there with, with the uh run line here Minus the one and a half, if I'm um, pretty sure there. All right, so that's going to do it here for the show, guys. Like, thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe and set those notifications. We'll be back again here tomorrow here for the show. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our crew from tonight. We're going to go ahead and bring them in. And we goodbye, guys. You guys have a great afternoon, evening. We'll catch up with you again tomorrow here on the 